Now we'll go faster. But this is going to be the fun part because this is where I'm going to explain how the biology actually works. And, it, and I will, um, we'll get to the secret of life before, before we're over. Okay, so what we were talking about is how, how cells actually work. And it's very similar to this. It's a, it's a machine. So just as the gears move and connect and turn and make an action, so do the proteins inside the cell. And the, there are proteins, I said there are 150,000 different proteins that provide both for our structure and our behavior. So 150,000 different shaped proteins. Now, uh, there, again, it's like inside the cell, they're just like a, a, like a clock with all the proteins engaging like gears. So this picture is uh, going to show three different examples of proteins. These are molecules blown up very large. And the question is, what makes each protein a different shape? So why, where does the shape come from? And is underneath the uh, skin, <laughs> there's a backbone inside each protein, a backbone. And just like a backbone gives you your shape or you, you can change your shape, so does a protein. Now, what's really interesting is that all proteins share the same characteristics, so I only have to talk about one protein, but then I'm talking about all proteins. All proteins have a backbone made out of linked units, just like the vertebrae. The protein, the backbone pieces are called amino acids. There are 20 different shaped amino acids. And what makes each protein different is the, the length of the chain and also the sequence of the different amino acids. The DNA, the gene, is the information of which amino acid comes after the other amino acid. But this is, um, this is not the best model because all the beads have the same shape. So I'm going to use three different shaped pipes. A straight pipe, one with a 90 degree bend, and one with a 45 degree bend. That's just three out of how many? So, okay, and they, they're just like the beads, they, pu they plug into each other. And these are, these are bonds, and in the real n chemical name, they're called peptide bonds. So I will assemble this one protein. And now you can see that the sequence gives a rigid backbone. And one quick question. If I take this apart and put it back together again in a different sequence, will I get the same shape? No. So, nice. so good, because that means what, what's the point is that every protein has a unique sequence. So how does it work? Let's go to this picture. You get that one day. Can you, in your mind, see them moving? Okay, now replace the gears with protein. Okay. Now, in your mind, can you imagine when this protein moves, it moves this protein, and then it moves this protein. And this is a, a, a combination of a protein and a metal machine. Now, take away the metal parts, protein machine. Now, there are different groups of proteins. When they move, they make different functions. And the proteins are called pathways. Okay? So there's respiratory pathway, a digestion pathway, muscle contraction pathway. Okay, so inside every cell are protein gears. When they move, they make functions. And most students in, like, uh, medicine or science or complementary medicine study this protein system called the Krebs cycles. Anybody knows the Krebs cycle? And these are protein gears that when they engage create the function of the Krebs cycle. Okay, now are you ready for the secret of life? Okay, before I tell you the secret, I want you to know the, the sky is not going to open up and the light come in here. It's not such a big secret. Like a backbone, 
the you can twist and flex and change the shape so i will show you two shapes and ask you which shape is more stable one or two and you can't answer the question because i leave out one fact okay the yellow pipe are both negatively charged one or this is two one which one this one yeah because the the two negative charges they repel each other okay now the secret there's a protein and then there's something called a signal the signal can be a chemical like a drug a hormone a growth factor or a signal can be a vibrational wave but i'll use the chemical one because you can see it now here is what it this is negative the yellow okay and this is positive charge but more positive charge than this has negative charge okay this comes like this and when it gets near the protein it will bind what's the charge at this end yeah and the charge here is this more stable or is this one more stable what did it do it, it changed shape it moves movement is where life comes from when proteins change shape they create behavior now if the signal comes off what does the protein do it moves back so that you are made out of proteins that gives you the structure but the movement is the protein plus the signal So if you are dead and you are you still have your protein body what's missing the signal okay so in this uh protein gears and it's each protein is like a lock and the signal is like a key and there's a different signal for different protein when the signal when the signal uh moves and binds to the protein behavior when the signal is not there no behavior if you want the behavior to go again what do you have to do An the signal. Under signal another signal and then protein goes again your body will move when the signals come will stop when the signals are not there so these are the, again the three different proteins and these are actual molecular studies of how the protein moves with signal 1 with signal 2 signal 3 and this is the behavior of protein okay. now in medicine the signals are always indicated to be physical chemical because medicine is newtonian so all signals must be matter recently uh physicists are looking at protein movement and this is a paper in the journal nature and these two authors pop fristic and goodman were studying how proteins move the behavior and they wanted to predict the movement so like newton when he predicted the movement of the planets they use newtonian physics a newtonian equation to predict the movement it didn't work and this is a review of this paper and this chemist physical chemist writes the most pressing question raised by popfristic and goodman when will chemistry textbooks begin to serve as aids rather than barriers to this enriched quantum mechanical perspective on how molecular turnstiles move because when they use quantum physics to study the movement they were able to accurately predict the movement so the most important conclusion is the subtitle of Listen. the article 
What are the forces that control the twisting and folding of molecules into complex shapes? Don't look for the answers in your organic chemistry textbook. The reason why this is important is that medicine is based on organic chemistry. And the answers to how life works are not in the book. In a more recent, uh, a more recent one, this uh, concept of materialism, matter only, false. Okay. This is a, a more recent paper just a few months ago, and they, how they control biological functions. They were studying protein movement, and what they showed was this. It acted as a quantum mechanical machine. And if they shine a light on the protein, when the light, when the waves were in phase, the protein was active. And when they shine the light and the waves are out of phase, it shut off the protein. So it says, for a quantum mechanical object, one can arrange interference of several paths to create constructive interference that selects one state and destructive interference that blocks the other. Proteins respond to good vibes and bad vibes. So this is a picture of the light pulse that they shine on the protein to make it active or to shut it off. So our belief that we use today in medicine of chemical control is incorrect because the proteins respond to the vibration. So now you have enough information to know how life works. You are made out of protein. The signal, where does the signal come from? The field. Yeah. Right. And so uh, the field is the signal. Medicine talks about molecules, but then physics talk about energy control. So the energy in your body that controls the protein is a vital force. So the new science brings back the old story of vital forces controlling life. So when a signal binds to a protein, what happens to the protein? It moves. It makes behavior. Okay? Now, if you are healthy, your behavior is good. But if you have a dis-ease, the behavior is not right. Question. What can cause disease? There's only two things. Either the protein is bad or the signal is bad. Now, look. People with bad proteins got them from birth defects. Because if you were born with defective genes and the genes make the protein, then the protein is defective. But less than 5% of the population has birth defects. That means 95% of the people should have a healthy, happy existence. But if you were one of the healthy people and now you are sick, what would cause the problem? All right. Is there are only three ways to, to mess up the signal. One, trauma. So if I fall off the stage and, and make my, wrench my back, the signal is, is uh, interfered with. Number two, toxins. If the chemistry is not good inside the body, the signal cannot be passed through bad chemicals. Both of these interfere with the propagation of the signal. But the third one is thought, the mind. There is nothing wrong with the body. It's just sending the wrong signal at the wrong time. So if you change your thought and your mind, you can change the biology. And this, the mind, is the primary cause of illness on our planet today.